Numerous woke media outlets are doing everything they can to try and destroy Game Science's upcoming Black Myth Wukong game. We've seen them push out all kinds of disgusting accusations without any real evidence to support them. In fact, there's actually a lot of evidence disproving a lot of what they say, or at least throwing doubt onto their claims. Most recently, though, we are seeing reviews come out where they are claiming that the game lacks inclusivity and diversity, and this is a knock against it when the game literally has you playing a monkey and you are fighting a bunch of supernatural monsters. You cannot make this stuff up. These people have an agenda and they will continue to push it over and over and over again until you succumb to their will. We will not be doing this. We will continue to fight against them. Before we get to this, I'd like to ask you, please hit that subscribe button, hit that bell for notifications so you don't miss any of our future videos here at The Trent Report. Roll this up over at thatparkplace.com. And yes, indeed, the Black Myth Wukong benchmark tool hit over 85,277 concurrent peak players in the two days since it released, despite numerous media smears against the game's developer game science. It's probably been a little bit more than two days now because I did indeed write this article uh, about two days ago. And obviously, there has been some developments since I wrote this. But just so you're clear, this benchmark tool doesn't allow you to actually play the game at all. The company posted this on their social media account on X. Prepare yourself. It's almost time to start your adventure. The Black Myth Wukong benchmark tool is now available for free download on Steam. This tool allows you to preliminary check your PC's hardware performance and system compatibility when running the game. You can customize benchmark settings to preview game visuals and performance under different graphics options. This tool is a PC benchmarking application specifically developed for Black Myth Wukong. It is separate from the game itself and is non-playable. Your benchmark results can assist the development team in better identifying potential software and hardware compatibility issues before the official game launch. This will facilitate further ass assessment of potential performance risks and sporadic issues, ultimately enhancing the final release quality of Black Myth Wukong. And as you can see here on SteamDB, the game had a peak concurrent or the benchmark tool had a peak concurrent of 85,277 players when it uh, right after it went live. I mean, just massive, massive amounts of interest in this game. We know this because it is also the number one most wishlisted upcoming game according to SteamDB. It has over 623,973 followers on Steam by and far the most in the top 10. You can see there a second game there, Hollow Knight Silk Song is just sitting at shy of, uh, just shy of 300,000. So almost more than double what the second place game has. That is absolutely phenomenal, the interest in this game. And this all comes after these smears that I have been I mentioned at the beginning of this video. And these accusations were first levied by Rebecca Valentine and Ki Hoon Chan at IGN. The duo reported this. Several posts of service from Chinese social media site Weibo, written by individuals from the studio that contained multiple references to genitalia and sexual innuendos. This was coupled by recruitment posters by the studio produced in 2015, which featured images and headlines that point to a culture of ingrained sexism in game science. So those sound pretty bad, right? That sounds pretty bad. However, they provide no evidence of these headlines or posters in the article. However, they do provide a description. It says here in one post, a risque illustration that resembles the artwork of Austrian artist Egon Shelley is accompanied by a header that says mandatory self-pleasure. In another poster that featured the rear view of a woman, the ad reads, don't screw your colleagues. In the same ad, friends with benefits were also implied as an office perk. And a third poster featuring a dumbbell is far more pointed with the ad stating that fatties should F off. So a lot of that does sound pretty awful. That sounds pretty terrible. Um, but they continue. They also write this. And we'll get to some of the counters here. Again, no evidence to show any of this actually. Uh, we There is no evidence. They don't provide any evidence in their actual article. Anyways, they also go after the uh, founder, co-founder of Game Science, Feng Ji, uh, and criticized him for uh, a social media post he posted to Weibo. And I guess they translated it as saying, he said this, I want to expand my circle and hire more people. Get licked until I can't get an erection. It also alleges he wrote this. I know you just happen to be a little depressed. It is my honor to provide you with some comfort in the lower half of your body. Furthermore, the report claims he wrote this. I get wet after watching it a couple times. The pressure in my crotch is immense. And they did actually provide 
uh, a screenshot of this here with their translations. The report also took issue with the developer's co-founder and lead artist, Yang Chi, declaring that men and women are biologically different. Nothing wrong with that. They are. <laughs> That's obvious. The report alleged that he wrote that men, quote, were holding a heavy machine gun and shooting at governments in your dreams. What the ladies are dreaming about are bags that would make their friends jealous. He then concluded the post by suggesting that he would need to put on silk stockings and sus suspenders to work, brew chrysanthemum tea, and put a humidifier on his table to make soft and effeminate things. Don't really see anything wrong with that whatsoever. Just seems to be IGN writers outraged that uh, the people over in China still believe in reality are not living in a delusion like many people here in the United States of America and the West, but lots of people living in utter delusion. It's truly, it's truly sad. It's very sad. That's why we're fighting here. That's why we're making videos like this. Finally, it accused technical artist Dawe of claiming that players can masturbate to a female character in the game by looking at her more. It alleges he wrote, although I'm not used to the snake neck, I can still nurture that fetish. It was referring to basically the serpent like creature that is in the game that has like a humanoid head, I guess. However, these translations have been called into question. A clip from Asmund Gold notes that Feng Ji's comment is used uh, is a used idiom in the Chinese language as a colloquial expression used humorously or sarcastically to describe a situation where excessive flattery or sycophancy has an overwhelming and paralyzing effect on someone. The use of such metaphors can be found in informal speech on social media. So they're clearly taking this out of context of the Chinese language, or at least that is what uh, Asmund Gold and this person he's citing is is saying here. So again, pushing back on these disgusting allegations that IGN is making. The video also alleges that the other posts were translated, quote, in the most uncharitable way possible in order to push the narrative that the developer is sexist and misogynist. And this is not unheard of. Remember, it was IGN France who was going after uh, the Stellar Blade developers over at Shift Up, saying they were causing real-world harm to females by creating attractive characters for their games. It's absolutely revolting what these Western media companies do to push this disgusting agenda that they have, this woke ideology. So uh, I think it's probably likely that uh, the clip here from Asmund Gold is absolutely correct. And IGN was indeed trying to smear Game Science and Black Myth Wukong, especially knowing that this game has a ton of interest in it and they could get a lot of clicks for IGN. So, nevertheless, IGN also doubled down on the accusations as part of their Black Myth Wukong first impression article. Valentine wrote a section addressing the outlet's report from November. She said this, Last year, we published a comprehensive report on IGN detailing a number of sexist and inappropriate remarks made by multiple developers of Black Myth Wukong, including those in leadership roles at Game Science. As of the publication of this preview, Game Science has yet to provide any response or statement addressing our report or their past remarks. She went on to add this. It is also true that several of the people who are making it have made disparaging remarks about women and don't seem to be interested either in retracting their past statements or in supporting the numerous women who are being har harassed in online conversations about Black Myth Wukong purely for expressing their discomfort with those statements. Both of these ideas can exist simultaneously. What audience want to do about this conflict is ultimately their choice. She then said this, one last note, I didn't see any women or femme-coded characters in the demo, and I was able to confirm from Game Science that there were none present in the section of the game presented to the press. There will be women in the final game, but for now, it is impossible to really comment on whether or not Game Science developers ex uh, express beliefs permeate Black Myth, Wukong, Black Myth Wukong in a meaningful way. So even here, she's already signaling to her other woke media journalists that you need to... <laughs> Get in line. This game doesn't have enough diversity and inclusion in it. And this is bad because you didn't see it in the demo when she's literally attacking them for talking about a female character. Remember, like you can't make this stuff up. I mean, these people, these people are, are, are truly, truly vile individuals pushing, pushing these lies which I think they are, are indeed lying. I don't think that there is evidence to support their claims. And in fact, we have evidence that uh, refutes them or at least significantly casts a ton of doubt on them. And as I said, she was pushing this out. So her other colleagues in other 
woke media outlets would would catch on, and that's exactly what they did. Tom Regan over at The Guardian followed suit as a trained soldier. He says, I am unfortunately met with very little honest communication when I bring up a report from IGN, which related alleged sexual, or excuse me, alleged sexist comments from multiple developers at Game Science, as well as those in leadership roles. He then referenced an interaction with one of Game Science's co-founders, who he refers to as Ted, he says, I present Ted with the opportunity to address the claims of misogynistic posts and whether he feels that they represent game science's values. Instead, I am shut down with a hasty no comment from their UK a PR representative. And then after a long wait, given a longer statement of no comment via Ted's translator. I am then told that game science's US PR agency will follow up later with a prepared statement only to be sent the following. Game science is focused on the demo at this time and will only answer questions related to gameplay so basically just shutting these people down not addressing their accusations that they are making which have already been called into question which of note he doesn't put that at all he does not address that these accusations made by ign have been called into question or there is any doubt in them shows his lack of integrity by not pointing out that that has indeed happened but that's because these people don't have integrity. They're all about pushing the agenda. GameSpot would also push these claims in a recent video titled Black Myth Wukong, Everything to Know. In the video, the narrator says this, it should be noted that allegations against game science have surfaced over the years via reports of the developer fostering a sexist culture and work environment with numerous women in the Chinese gaming community, highlighting these problems within the studio, as well as backlash following crude and controversial social media posts by game science co-founder Ji Feng. Uh, very deceptive here. They're saying via reports. There is literally one report, and then there's a bunch of articles around this report, as we just mentioned, as with the example of The Guardian. They're all referencing this one single IGN report. None of these other outlets have done any kind of individual reporting on this. They, can, they cannot confirm it. That's what I'm taking away. The fact that you have not confirmed this, you haven't done your own individual report, shows that it's unlikely true. And they, again, no, no, no. Counter. They do not show the counter argument. They do not show the counter evidence that shows that this report has been called into question. Because again, these people don't actually care about the truth. They don't care about the evidence. They don't care about the facts. They only care about pushing their woke agenda. And then the, the video continues with the narrator continues saying, as of this recording, Game, Sciences, Game Science has repeatedly refused to comment on the allegations, although it has removed some of the offensive wording in its marketing materials that has contributed to the misogynistic culture. The narrator then directs re, uh, directs re, um, viewers uh, to read Tom Regan's aforementioned coverage in The Guardian. So uh, absolutely uh, disgusting stuff here. Media doing all out uh, attack on game science, on Black Myth Wukong, knowing that this game is extremely popular. And in fact, we're seeing this uh, in the reviews now. They are getting reviews. You can see Screen Ramp. Uh, attacking the game with a three out of five stars here. And uh, this is over from, from Bear Dark here. She shared this screenshot of the of Screen Rants review. And you can see here, one of the big cons is lacking in inclusivity and diversity, literally following suit to what IGN's Rebecca Valentine was telling uh, the her woke acolytes to indeed do. And again, it is a game featuring a monkey fighting a bunch of supernatural beings and fighting them. And everything I've seen is there is a lot of diversity in the monsters that you're fighting. Obviously, you have a single player, so you're not choosing between different characters or anything like that. You just are playing as a Wukong or Sun Wukong. I'm not really sure exactly which one it is, but you're playing as the monkey. <laughs> So I wouldn't expect you to be engaging in real world inclusivity and diversity when you're literally in some supernatural world. You're playing as a monkey and you're fighting all of these supernatural creatures. It's just utterly ridiculous and just shows how um, deceptive these people are and how they don't actually have any integrity. They only care about pushing their agenda. They don't really care about the gameplay. They have all of these gameplay things around it but their real their real thing is right there lacking in inclusivity and diversity that's what they really care about they don't care about anything else whatsoever but i think this game is still going to do phenomenally well if we go back you know 85 over 85,000 people 
concurrently playing or just using the benchmark tool. Eight, over 85,000 concurrently using the benchmark tool. Again, over 623,000 followers. This game is going to sell very, very well and do extraordinarily well. Very similar to Stellar Blade, which the media also ran smear campaigns against. These smear campaigns are clearly not working and gamers are not listening to them anymore. And that is a good thing. But let me know what you guys make of this. Let me know what you make of these smear campaigns being run by the media against game science and against Black Myth Wukong. Let me know in the comments below. Remember to always be charitable, especially to each other, but to always speak the truth.